PowerPoint is Microsoft's answer to the old slide projector and overhead projector. It allows you to make interactive, exciting presentations that are delivered via data projector or over the internet. PowerPoint can also be used as an easier to use way to make YouTube videos or other videos for internet websites, even your own website. This course will teach you how to use PowerPoint 2013 quickly with a focus on new features, but it is for an absolute beginner who has no previous PowerPoint knowledge. So there are two methods to acquire PowerPoint 2013. You can purchase a retail copy at a store, buy once, and you are entitled to use that, use that copy of PowerPoint, probably bought it as part of Office, so you'll get some other Office applications as well, and any updates that come along with that version of Office you are entitled to receive. A new model is a subscription model. Subscribe to Office 365 at around $10 a month. Pricing will vary depending on your region. And you are given a license to install Office on up to five machines. Anytime there's an Office update, you automatically receive the update. When a new version of Office comes out, you automatically receive that new version as long as you are a subscriber. However, when you stop subscribing, you lose access to Office altogether. You do not have any rights anymore to use the software. Like when you purchase, if you purchased it, you have it forever and always. The subscription model, you only have it as long as you are an active subscriber. So what's new in PowerPoint 2013? We have several new options and presenter tools. We can zoom in on our slides. The slide navigator allows you to browse slides in the presentation. 2013 is wide screen friendly. There's a new 169 layout and themes developed for this. This presentation is in a 169 layout. So we can start meetings online. We have improved design tools, easier ways to line up with Smart guides, if you've ever used Visual Studio or in, done any kind of uh, work in Visio, you will know about smart guides. Improvements to Motion Pass, and we can also merge common shapes. Now, let's look at the basics of PowerPoint. On the screen, you see two different PowerPoint icons, the tile on the Windows 8 Start screen and a PowerPoint icon from a, on a Windows 7 computer. This presentation was developed on a computer running Windows 8.1. So if you're using Windows 7, PowerPoint will look the same, but some icons and other features might look slightly different due to the redesign in Windows 8. So let's get started by looking at the PowerPoint interface. So when you double-click the PowerPoint icon, either on the Start screen in Windows 8, or a desktop icon, either Windows 7 or Windows 8, you'll be presented with the following window, the PowerPoint Start screen. On the left-hand side, any recent presentations that you have will display. To open them, simply click on one. How many recent items display, or if they display at all, can be set in PowerPoint options, which we will cover later. I also have an option to open other presentations. This will open the Open File dialog box to allow me to open a presentation. On the main part of the window, we see lots of templates. Some of these templates are local, i.e. they come with PowerPoint. Some are from the internet. I can also search online templates at the top by simply typing a search query, and as long as I have internet access, matching templates will be displayed. Let's start a blank presentation. To select a template, double-click it with the left mouse button. So here we have a blank presentation. You will see this presentation is called Presentation 1. If I create another one, I'll get Presentation 2, Presentation 3, etc. Now this up here where it's called Presentation 1 is called the title bar. So now let's take a look at the PowerPoint interface. So here we have the same blank presentation with various elements of the PowerPoint interface labeled. First of all, we have the status bar, which is down here at the bottom. It shows the current slide, the number of slides in the presentation, and if my current slide has any notes or comments. It also allows us to change between the views, normal, slide sorter, reading, and, and slideshow view. We'll talk about those later in the course. 
Over here we have the zoom control, it allows us to zoom in and out on the current slide. In the middle here, we have the current slide that we're working on. Over here we have the slide sorter. Each slide in the presentation will appear. I only have one slide in this blank presentation, but if I had multiples, they will appear. Up here we have the file menu, which is also called backstage view. It allows us to open presentations, create a new one, save, etc. Here we have the ribbon. The ribbon is divided into tabs. These tabs are also menus. The tabs are Home, Insert, Design, Transitions, Animations, Slideshow, Review, and View. Now I have an additional tab called Add-ins that is added by my screen capturing software. It is not part of PowerPoint by default. Below each tab are commands or tools that you can use. The commands or tools located beneath each tab relate to the tab. For example, to add an animation, use the Animation tab. That said, the tools under each tab are broken down into groups or categories so that you can easily find what you need. So here we're looking at Home. We have the Clipboard group, the Sliders group, the Font group, and so on. And finally, here we have the Help, and as mentioned before, the Title Bar. If you're using PowerPoint on a tablet, you can adjust the spacing between buttons on the ribbon to make it easier to use. You do this by activating touch mode. Click the quick access toolbar and find the touch button. There are two options, mouse and touch. Touch makes everything bigger, more space between the buttons, and more space between each ribbon tab to make them easier to use with touch. To return to mouse, simply select mouse. To completely hide the button, click the Customize Quick Access Toolbar drop-down and unselect Touch Mouse Mode. Let's now look at Backstage View in a little more detail using the presentation that we went through at the beginning of this lesson. When you first click the File tab, you'll see information about the current presentation in Backstage View. But if you look at the column on the left, you'll see other familiar options you had under the File tab and other Office programs. These include saving, exporting, printing, sharing, opening new presentations, and even setting options for your PowerPoint program. We'll cover these as the, as the course progresses. You go into Backstage View to create new presentations and to open existing ones. In fact, you'll find that being able to navigate Backstage View is, an impo as, is as important as learning your way around the ribbon. In the next lesson, we will start to, to create presentations. For now, let's talk about how to open a presentation. In 2013, the way that Open and Save works was totally redesigned. Instead of just getting an Open or Save dialog box when we click Open or Save in Backstage, we actually get options. These are options that we can set up or some are predetermined. Recent presentations, just like at the beginning when we saw Recent in the Start screen, in Options we can set how many recent presentations show up here. We can also add in, using our account feature, which we'll talk about later, we can add in SharePoints, Stop, uh, OneDrives, and also other web locations. Computer is your local computer. In Office 2010, when we click Open, this is what we receive, just the Open dialog box, as you see here. So to get to that, I get Computer and then click Browse. I can also go to a folder different than the default by going to one of my recent folders here. So I show the current folder where the presentation is saved in my recent folders. Browse just opens up the current folder. Save works exactly the same way as open. So I can also save as a certain type. And I have lots of options here. PowerPoint is the default. If I want to use macros, I have to use a macro-enabled presentation. I can save any presentation as a PDF, an XPS file, a template, an office theme, a show, a video, etc. We'll cover all of these options as we progress through the course. For now, just know we use Backstage View to open, save, print, share, or export presentations. To close the presentation, we can click the Close option in Backstage View, 
or we can simply click the X in the upper right hand corner. There may be times when using PowerPoint that you forget how to do something or need assistance. You can press F1 or click the question mark icon to launch PowerPoint help. You will see a window such as this one when you click help. Depending on options selected what you see may vary. So I can click in here and type a search query let's say animations and I will get help based on what I type. The more specific I am the better the help will be.